Hey guys, Michael here. I'm going to cover integrating the Generator Gore Dismember Kit into the multiplayer survival game template. Now, you can pick this up on the Marketplace. I believe it's about 40 US dollars, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, the one thing I do want to say before we go anywhere is that it's not set up for network. It doesn't have any replication taken into account. You could probably do that on your own, but I'm not going to cover support of the Gore Kit itself. I'm just going to cover integration into the template. So that aside, let's get started. So we're going to create a multiplayer survival game template project. We're going to use 4.16 because the Gore Kit at the moment is only supporting up to 4.16. So let's give it a name of Gore Tutorial. And then we also want to create a project for the and we'll just call this Gore Tutorial Source. So that's done creating. Obviously if you haven't downloaded it'll take a little longer than that. I'm going to open up the Gore Tutorial Source to start with. And that's just so we can migrate our content over. So this uh, is a very easy a very easy kit to integrate, it only takes a couple of minutes, um, it might take us a little bit longer just covering all the different things and opening projects and that, but it's a very simple integration process. Uh, most things are pretty simple once you work out how, to, how they work, the challenge comes in just learning where to begin with someone else's work. But that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Let's wait for this guy to open. Cool. So once it's open, just want to click on content, right click on the Gore folder and click migrate. It'll tell you what it's going to migrate, click OK, and then you want to go to your project. So it's MSG T tutorial content, select folder. Let us do its thing. It'll say there's been some files not copied. That's not a big issue. Now I'll leave that open, but we'll open up our other project. So once it's migrated, open up your project. So that starts up. Yep, there we go. So that's opening. I'll just do a quick run through of the demo level so you can see what it does. It might be a little bit hiccupy because I'm opening another project. So you can see that this member and the crosshair is not aligned. And it works on other pro other meshes as well. Change blood color, all that sort of stuff. Um, oops, must have come over here. And you can do things like set up ones that are fatal ones and that. So again, I'm not going to go through the pro like the kit itself. We're just going to cover the integration process. Um, the developer, I believe, does have documentation. I believe it's somewhat limited. But it will get you started on how to use the kit and how to set up your own meshes and all that sort of thing. So I'll just wait for this guy to open up and we can get going. Come on. Okay. So. Before we go anywhere, we're just going to set up our demo level to be a little bit quicker for testing. So I've just gone into SGT maps and opened the survival map. And we're just going to delete all these player starts so we can put one down and ensure that that's the one we use. Move over here near this AI. Now these AI are very simple. They're honestly only in there to demonstrate how to attach loot to AI characters. Um, so he won't actually shoot at us unless we're right in front of him. So we're going to add a player start just here. Go to place actor player start. It'll rotate a little bit so we're facing this way. And then we're going to go into the SGT folder, blueprints, actors. And we're going to look for this one here, SGT pickup. Drag that one in and we're just going to set that to be a machine gun. There. We're gonna make a couple, couple of copies of that. Set the copies to machine gun rounds, and we'll set them to 25. So the purpose of this is just so that we can spawn 
right here next to the AI, pick up the weapon and ammo, and then go straight at killing him. Rather than having to run around the level and pick it up. So, once that's done, save. We'll go back to the content folder, go into the gore kit and set up things. So, if we go into blueprints and look for this one here, gore data table, this is where you define all the settings for the gore kit for your characters. Now, normally you would click add and go through and add a new entry for each character. The example AI is using the default mannequin, so we're just going to switch the class over to the example O1 and be done with it, just to save time in the tutorial. Close and save, but we do need to change the material on the mesh for the body part. So if you go back to the gore kit, go to meshes, go to divided, uh, divided meshes and open up all the ones that start with mannequin. So, uh, go to our AI here, click on his mesh and click browse to asset for the material. So these are the two materials we want to use here. With this one selected, we can now go back to this one and set all element zero materials to that one. So this is just so the meshes when they come off look right. We also want to click the logo one here, set element one to that on all of these. Now obviously you're going to have your own character meshes and your own materials, so this is going to vary in your project, but that's how you set that up. Click save all, it'll do its thing. Okay, so we are done setting up the kit, now we just need to integrate it. We go to the survival game template root folder, go into blueprints, and then go into game. We want to open up the survival controller. All we need to do in the survival controller is click add component and add the BP gore component. Once that's done, compile, save, and close the survival controller. We go back to the blueprints folder and go to components and open up our inventory manager. We just need to add in the logic for the hit results now. Now in the template, the weapon fire is set up in the inventory manager. That's because it's intended to be example content for weapons only. Uh, the template was made with the idea that people would want to have the weapons be unique to their game and they would make their own weapon system. So when you are doing this, all you need to do is get the hit results from your weapon fire. So wherever you've got your weapon fire, whether you are using the example one or you've got your own weapon blueprints that control that, you just need to look, go to that location. So in this case, we want to go to fire weapon. And right at the end here, we've got our line trace and this is our hit result here. So what we're going to do, because there's a whole lot of different ways you can implement this, right? You could have it so that you uh, dismember characters and that kills them or you can have it so when they die you can dismember their dead bodies that's what we're going to do because I want to keep the tutorial simple and versatile we're just going to work on the characters once they're dead so off of our hit results here we actually have a uh, node that we can use to get the life state built into the template so if we just drag off here and we go get life state on the character, this actually returns us a is dead bull, and that's part of the template. So after the is valid, go to that, and we'll set up a branch. So if the character is dead, we'll do the dismemberment. If not, we'll just do the normal damage. Or if it is dead, what we want to do is get our player controller reference. Not that one there, we want to use this one here. We want to just cast that to the survival controller. So we need to get a reference to the gore. And if that is unsuccessful for whatever reason, we're just going to pass through the normal. It should never be unsuccessful unless you're using a different controller, but that's neither here nor there. So from here, we want to get BP gore component. And we want to do try to dismember. Put that in there. Now I don't imagine you'd ever need to pass through the damage as well, but we're going to do that just in case. Move all this stuff over so it's a little bit. Better. 
And so we just need to plug in a hit result, which is this guy all the way back here. So we just bring this one over here. A little bit messy. That's it. So now we should be up and running. So we'll just go through what it does here. So it saves. So we do our hit, draws a decal, checks if there was a valid hit actor. So that's if we hit something. If we did hit something, we want to get its life state. Is it dead or is it alive? Now, if it is not a character, it will always return false. So it'll go through and just do the normal damage. If it is a character, it'll check if it's dead. If it's not dead, it'll go through normal damage. If it is dead, it'll go through, cast our player controller reference to our survival controller, and then call the try to dismember logic on the component. If that casting, for whatever reason, fails, we'll go through and continue as Otherwise, we'll do this. That's it. So, let's compile that. We should be all ready to go now. So what should happen here is we equip the weapons. We should be able to kill the AI, and then once he's dead, we should be able to dismember his body. So let's go through and kill him. So in a second, I think his body will despawn after about 15 seconds, but we've got about 15 seconds to dismember him. There we go, he's rolling away and his head's still attached. So that's how you set up the gore kit, guys. It's pretty simple. Um, obviously you can do a whole lot of fun things with it. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you have any feedback or comments, leave them in the comments below. Cheers.